This is Joe Cola with OKRaw.com to do another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, I want to show you guys something that I thought about when I was juicing in my garden day. I've been basically juicing in my garden. It's just really fun to hang out in the sun, make vitamin D, and create my juice. I think I made like eight jars, about 32 ounces each, some 24 of juice, um, all different types with the Green Star Pro Juicer today. And uh, when I'm juicing, you know, I get to, you know, hear nature, have this, have the sun on my skin and create vitamin D. And it's just it's a lot nicer to me than working inside in a sterile kind of kitchen, you know, and uh, also the fresh air and everything. But anyways, I think about a lot of things in my life and I've been on this journey now for the last 25 years. And I have a lot of things to share, a lot of new ideas that may not be textbook you know there's many different raw food books or many different raw food teachers which I would consider myself one you know and I don't I mean I believe that there's more to life than just what's in the book or the knowledge it has been currently learned there are new fields and new things being discovered all the time I mean we don't even know all the different plant compounds in in this plant right here they're still discovering new compounds and how certain compounds interact with certain other compounds and then this happens or this doesn't happen and life is so complex and we try to dilute it down and make it super simple like oh just eat this diet or eat that and you'll be fine like everybody's so entirely different and then there are so many different factors that could play a role in your health and in my opinion what I'm going to talk about today with you guys is probably one of the most important factors that basically not enough people, there's a few people talking about it, but not enough people are talking about it, especially in the raw food community. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys the most essential nutrients for your body that you're probably not getting, because I know you're not eating them, all right? And let's get right into it, all right? So there's a lots of nutrients out there. There's vitamins and minerals. There's carbs, you know, fiber and protein and, I mean macronutrients and micronutrients and as you guys know that watch me I'm a big fan of the micronutrients you know are you getting your anthaxanthin or your zeaxanthin your lutein or your lycopene or your or your beta lanes or your astaxanthin <laughs> all right um, and so these are all very important things but you know you guys can source those relatively easy but the nutrients that I'll be talking about are ones that you may not have a direct role in making in your body although you can influence them so what am I talking about I'm talking about like secondary metabolites created either by our bodies or through other vehicles such as bacteria and our microflora or microbiome or even our body when it takes certain nutrients that we give it and then a chain reaction happens right if they're making masks because of the COVID outbreak, right? And they have the material, the paper material to make it, that's great. But if they're missing the elastic band, they can't make a functional mask because you need that elastic band to hold on that material, right? Yeah, there's ways around it and whatnot. But, you know, so that's a simple analogy. If your body does not have all the different required nutrients or things occurring, then you will not be able to make or bacteria will not be able to make the secondary metabolites or have the proper reactions inside our bodies. Here's one example. Kaishan's disease happened over in China where basically they discovered that people would have some problems with their heart and some other disease that, that was highly fatal if they were eating foods that did not contain high levels of selenium. So if you're selenium deficient, this, is, this can potentially happen because a virus can mutate because of the selenium deficiency. If you have a selenium sufficiency, then you will not get the Kaishan's disease as they determine. So it's very important to you know get selenium as well as other different nutrients because they determine selenium caused the Kaishan's scurvy, you know, caused by vitamin C. But there's so many other things that we don't even know about. So that's why I encourage you guys to have a really a wide breadth, breadth of uh, you know different foods you eat and have a big variety of foods you eat 
as many as possible. You know, I used to think s making things simple was good, but now as I go on, I'm learning more that, you know, having things more varied and more variety in life is a spice of life. Literally, you know, today I juiced rosemary when I was juicing, and it, I'll tell you, it didn't make the juice taste good, but now I'm, get, I'm glad I got some of those benefits of the rosemary that I was not literally getting before in any large amounts because I'd eat some here and there but I'm juicing it. So whether you want to do like me in my last episode, I made a soup with a ton of a lot of ingredients. And you know, on some levels I eat more for function versus like, oh, it doesn't look pretty, John. Like, I don't really care how it looks. I mean, I could make it look prettier if I add certain colors or maybe don't blend as long or different ingredients, um, you know, but I'm more after function. I know some of you guys want to eat pretty stuff and you know, that could take you to your grave faster that is completely your choice <laughs> my choice is to be more functional I've always been a more functional kind of person in life and not just all frou-frou this hat I mean I think it's a girl's hat it's functional because it keeps the sun out of my eyes keeps the sun off my face uh, that can prematurely age you you know like some people I have seen that may get too much sun you know and here's the thing you know I was out working or, or juicing in the garden with my shirt off earlier today and guess what? When our bodies are exposed to the sun, what happens? We make vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is also a big, huge deficiency. If you live in a northern climate and it's winter time, or a, a, a super southern climate and it's winter time, that you're not get, making enough vitamin D. So then you may have to supplement, but the natural method would be to get enough vitamin D by getting your body exposed to the sun each and every day, right? And so that's a conditional a vitamin or a conditional nutrient. If these conditions are met, then your body will do this or the bacteria will do this. And then this other item will be created or, or will occur, all right? I mean, I've, I have several examples I'd like to share with you guys. I mean, if you guys eat a carnivore diet, which I do not recommend carnivore diets, number one, for the animal's sake, number two, for the environment's sake, Number three, for your sake, to exclude large food groups where you're only eating animal products, you're excluding all the plant materials. If you're not eating the different fibers in the different plant materials, right, you don't have the probiotics, the microbiome, or the beneficial microbes, bacteria, fungi, you know, whatever in your gut, right, especially bacteria, which basically digest the indigestible fibers, the soluble fiber that's actually in the juice that I created today. Um, the bacteria basically will will eat, for lack of a better word, the soluble fibers, and then basically they'll poop out, for lack of a better word, this is not all the correct terminology there, um, things like the butyrate, which is basically a secondary metabolite from the bacteria that then gives us nutrients in our bodies to feed us and are an integral part of our body systems to work properly, right? And it's these kinds of things that are conditional statements. If you eat, you know, something like pomegranates or a pomegranate juice or maybe even pomegranate powder, right? Then your body will have the certain nutrients in there that then they have shown in, in some studies that your body will have acromancia. Now, what is acromancia? Well, it's, it's, it's a different kind of basically probiotic or microbiome bacteria that could live in our guts. And if we have the acromancia, then our bodies are gonna be more resi resilient to fighting disease, should we come down with something. So, you know, there are many different conditional kind of vitamins, which, and, and other nutrients, you know, that are very important, that are just not getting enough press, you know. Another very important nutrient are in, you know, actually, I don't think I have any here, look close by. Oh, well, yeah, here, right here. The onion family, you know, another very important nutrient are in the onion and kale family or brassica family of plants, allium and brassica family of plants. And those are the enzymes in the living plant flesh, You're right? When we cut open the, the plant flesh of kale or um, the allium family, the garlics, onions, right? Enzymes are released, which then turn that plant food into even a more nutritious plant food because it makes it more anti-cancerous and you know basically when we do damage to a living tissue of another plant you know enzymes are released because it's basically trying to fight off the bugs or fight off the predator eating it it creates additional 
plant toxins so that the bugs don't eat it, but they can be seen as nutrients for us, right? And this is also something that, you know, when I get involved in raw foods, I didn't really know, like, you know, we didn't, we didn't, I mean, there wasn't a lot of research on this stuff. I mean, microbiome research has just come out since the 1990s in a large way and has been accelerating rather quickly lately. So, you know, when I learn about new information, um, you know, I try to adjust and modify my approach to take advantage of it, especially when I do not see uh, any significant harm coming to me. And it just makes sense to me being on this planet longer, seeing how nature works, seeing how nature adapts. It just makes sense to me that having a more varied diet can be very helpful. And, you know, I know some of you guys don't like pomegranate sometimes because it tastes bitter or it's not super sweet fruit but they are so healing and I would encourage you guys you know to once again enhance your diet get enough Sun there are so many things like pitfalls was a game I used to play when I was a kid there's so many pitfalls that you can rub, run up against you know if you're not paying attention to these things you know if you're a subscriber of mine click the subscribe button right down below you know as I learn new things I strive to put it out and some of my videos of today recent videos may conflict with what I said 10 years ago and if that happens like man be happy for me because then I'm learning and growing of course you know I'm not always right sometimes I get it wrong so I would also encourage you guys to do your own research but I'm solid that if you guys do your own research on these you know secondary metabolites or conditional nutrients is what I like to call them you know you will come up with the same you know conclusion as I have is that we really want to enhance and expand the different varieties of foods we eat I know many of you guys shop with shopping lists and may go to the grocery store every week and get lettuce and oranges and bananas and romaine and maybe some dandelion and maybe some arugula or whatever you guys are buying and you buy that week in and week out right hey that's great you're getting all the nutrients in that food but what about the you know longevity spinach what about the <laughs> you can't really see if they're jacked up now. They're uh, my ashitaba. You know, what about the wild lettuce right here that I have growing that is really quite strong and bitter that has different nutrients than romaine <laughs> for sure. You know, uh, what about right next door? I, I can't pull this over, but you know, I have a uh, bele leaf, which is a South Pacific salad tree. <laughs> you know, here's my moringa, it's starting to sprout up. Um, from being dormant in the winter time, so I'm glad to see it it's starting to sprout up again. You know, I try to really vary my diet significantly. And if you don't, if you don't want to do it like I did in the last recipe, which is a soup recipe that had a lot of ingredients, and I'll be covering that in an upcoming episode. You know, just please, guys. You know, rotate your diet on a, on a daily basis, even on a weekly basis. Hey, this week I'm buying romaine lettuce. Next week I'm going to buy bok choy because I never buy bok choy. Or the following week, you know, I'm going to grow my own, I don't know, radish sprouts or clover sprouts because I barely ever eat those, right? So many different plant foods have different nutrients, different fibers, different kinds of everything in there that our bodies may need. And if you're excluding these things, that may be a problem. I mean, where are you guys getting your selenium, right? You know, Brazil nuts are known to be selenium accumulators. That being said, the part of that that's not commonly known is that it depends on where the Brazil nuts are grown. Brazil nuts only contain selenium if the soils where the Brazil nuts are grown contain the selenium. They have done studies where they test Brazil nuts from different countries and grown in different regions and different locations, and they don't always contain the same levels of selenium. So, you know, it, it's also very hard to just make straight, concrete, you know, facts and say, Brazil nuts always have selenium. Well, it's a good idea to eat Brazil nuts because they can contain higher levels of selenium, but not always, depending on what country they're grown and the soils they're grown. Selenium is not often put into agriculture so soils, but in a forest system where Brazil trees are grown, you know, selenium is recycled because it's in the plant leaves. The plant leaves drop on the ground. They compost down. They get absorbed back in the soil. And it's a loop unless the Brazil nuts are taken off the land and then sold. And then you get the selenium in you. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of these things that, like, a lot of new raw food teachers or people brand new to raw don't get. And they just repeat a lot of the dogma and or rhetoric or things that they've learned, which, hey, I think is great. We need more people eating more raw foods. But also, I would encourage you guys to have an open mind 
in these times that are changing and that are quite interesting, you know, in the real world, protect yourself and your health. Uh, one of the best ways you guys could do that is to eat the highest quality food. So I would encourage you guys to grow your own like I am here. Grow a wide variety. Include a wide variety of different plant foods processed in the least amount of way that you can so that you can enjoy them. Every plant has a whole different spectrum of vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, and phytochemicals. And I would encourage you guys to you know, rotate your diet and include at least one extra item that you haven't eaten before after watching this video. And then at least I'll think of as me being a success for today. So hey, comment down below what your thoughts are. I might reply to some comments, although I rarely have any time to reply to comments as much as I would because there's one of me and I have over 100,000 followers on this channel and over 700,000 on my gardening channel, over 50,000 on my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, link is down below. Um, you know, and I'm just trying to keep up with my garden, keep my diet diverse, and uh, eat a healthy diet so I could continue to make these videos and share my knowledge that I've learned over all these years with you as I learn it and as I change. So um, that's pretty much it for today. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, please be sure to share this video with somebody else. Not a lot of people talk about these kind of things like conditional nutrients as I like to call them. I mean, I only came up with that because like I thought of like an if then statement. I used to program, be a programmer back in the olden days. And you know, we had if then statements. If this condition is met, then do that. And that's how some of these nutrients are. If you get sun, then your body should make vitamin D if other conditions are met also. If you make have selenium, then you are exposed to the virus that could cause uh, the Kishan disease. I think it's called Kasaki virus. You know, you're not going to get Kishan disease. If this, then that. So many different conditions. And I want you guys to brace yourself and be prepared for all of them. And the, one of the best ways I feel to do that at this point is to vary your diet as widely as possible. Don't just always eat bananas, dates, and romaine, guys. Please, you know, include as much variety as you possibly can. If not in one meal, you know, hey, have mono meals of this food or that food or a different food every single day uh, of the year. And at least if you do that, you'll have 365 different foods you're eating. <laughs> I think uh, people far t get too much into a repetitive uh, kind of cyclical uh, you know, eating patterns, which is not good. Even me, you know, with that being said, I try to always switch it up based on what's right for my garden this time of year. Got lots of the longevity spinach. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else you think it could help. And uh, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new upcoming episodes. I come out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'll share what we'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And uh, make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel. Dedicated to teach you guys all about the finer points of living a healthy, plant-based, raw foods, fruit and vegetable dominated diet that literally you're just not going to hear anywhere else. I mean, I cover things that most people don't. And, you know, I think my channel should get viewed more, unfortunately because I have a lot of good info that I've learned and I've come up with. And I'm not just some noob that just got into raw food six months ago or two, two years ago. You know, I've literally, this is my 25th year now doing raw foods. And I've learned a lot, grown since then, changed since then, which is really good. And for, you know, people that have done the same thing and have not changed, I would, I would be a little bit concerned. You know, not to say that what they're doing isn't working for them, but maybe there is a better way. And I always always am hopeful and optimistic that maybe is a better way. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, uh, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always big.